Hello, show Alba Noa. That's hello, I'm Nova Scotia in the Gaelic. Why is that important? Because as of 2016, May is now officially called Nova Scotia Gaelic Month. Now, as much as I'd love to teach all the viewers some of the Gaelic, that ain't possible for one video. Instead, I'll share with you all five facts about the Gaelic and how it's important to me, my home, and Canada. Fact 1. A Brief History of the Gaelic In this video, I'm talking about my dialect, Nova Scotia Gaelic, which is an extension of Scottish Gaelic, a language spoken in Scotland for centuries. It was a dialect of Middle Irish, along with Manx Gaelic. All three are part of a Gaelic branch, which is a part of the Godelic family. It's written in the Latin alphabet, which was shoved onto the people when the Romans invaded and occupied a part of the British Isles. Because of the limited number of letters, not to mention different sounds of the languages, the people came up with an interesting way of spelling stuff. And even then, they still needed to add the accents. Although, if you compare the Gaelic and Middle English writings, you'll see similarities. Some things changed and some things stayed the same. Fact number two. How the Gaelic is unique. Folks who don't know a lot about Scottish Gaelic may confuse it with either Irish Gaelic or Scots. While Irish Gaelic, called Irish for short, may look similar, the two languages have grown apart over the centuries and sound very different. Someone who knows the Gaelic is no better at Irish any more than someone who knows French is no better at Spanish or Italian. The Irish language went through a spelling reform in the 1950s and dropped most of the silent consonants. Something Gaelic should think about doing. It doesn't help new learners, that's for sure. As for Minx, it's the other way around when writing and speaking. Scots isn't even considered a Celtic language. It's more of a dialect that developed out of Middle English. You may hear it getting called Lowland Scots, as that's the area where it developed. Fact number three. It's importance over here. The first couple of Scottish colony attempts were made by Highland settlers who spoke the language. Although they didn't last long, that was when I was first exposed to it. Over a century later, the Highland clearances and suppression of Highland culture across the pond led to waves of mass immigration. Tens of thousands of people adopted my home as their own, and in return, I adopted their culture and languages as my own. This helped build up my industry and identity. You can't think of Nova Scotia without thinking of Scotland. Fact number four. The decline. The Gaelic was about as common as English and French. There were communities, arts, literature, and jobs that routinely depended on it. However, there was always tension between other groups based on religion, ethnicity, and status. Gaelic cultures were never seen as equal to French or the English. Confederation didn't really help either. Among other things, that Anglo-centric identity that chased away the Gaels from Scotland follow them here. English was seen as the language of prestige, and people who spoke anything else were seen as uneducated. The fact that it had no stance back in Scotland made denouncing it even easier. Things got bad during World War II, when the Gaelic was practically prohibited due to Ireland being perceived as a Nazi sympathizing country, and no one wanted to hire a sympathizer. It got so bad that folks within and outside the communities punished children for speaking it. Numbers dropped by the thousands. Fact number five. The Gaelic status today. Despite this, there were still places that had speakers, namely places in Antigonish County and Cape Breton Island, where there's road signs in the Gaelic today. Not long after Canada started a campaign to be the country with a multicultural identity, support for minority languages and cultures were taking a look at, one of them being the Gaelic. The government began studying ways to bring it back. One of the results was the creation of the Office of Gaelic Affairs. Courses in schools and universities were offered, tourism industries got a new edge to work with, which led, of course, to job opportunities in the province. Just this month, GA supported numerous workshops, bursaries, and Kayleys all over the province. In today's world, we forget how important communication and community can be. Language ties into both, giving us all a sense of past and present. Nagail, free white share, sure. Tap a live.
blossom is red as the lace that we shed and for liberty's cause against alien laws when lucky and O'Neill and Ellen grew steel for Alba and Erin and Cambria's wheel the flower of the free the heather the heather the Bretons and Scots and Irish together the Manx and the Welsh and Cornish forever six nations are we proud Celtic and free